Good morning everyone! I would like to apologize in advance for not being able to join you physically today because I have prior commitments that I need to attend to. But I do understand the importance of in-service training for our professional development. So I gave extra effort recording my talk to help bridge this gap on our teaching practices. Let's just quickly refer to this year's theme, in-service training on culturally responsive and data-informed teaching strategies. Professional Development Initiative at Paliparan 3 Senior High School. For this inset, I was given the topic on assessment and reporting. So, we will be focusing on data-informed teaching practices. We are now on session 3 and this session is entitled Assess, Reflect, Report. Enhancing Teacher Practices on Assessment and Reporting. This topic covers PPSD's Domain 5, Assessment and Reporting. It has five strands, namely design, selection, organization, and utilization of assessment strategies, monitoring and evaluation of learner progress and achievement, feedback to improve learning, communication of learner needs, progress, and achievement to key stakeholders, and use of assessment data to enhance teaching and learning practices and programs. At the end of this session, I hope you will be able to design, select, organize, and utilize appropriate assessment strategies Determine how to properly monitor and evaluate learner progress and achievement. Provide feedback to learners and key stakeholders of learner needs, progress, and achievement to improve learning. And analyze assessment data as basis for teaching and learning practices and programs. I divided my topic into these four subtopics. Let's discuss the first subtopic. Designing, selecting, organizing, and utilizing appropriate assessment strategies. Let's answer some questions first. Our MCs will help me choose two random teachers to answer the questions. So here are the questions. For the first question, what is your primary task as a teacher? And the second question is, how do you know if you have successfully done your task? So you can pause this video while our MCs look for volunteer teachers to answer the questions. Thank you for your answers. Remember, our primary task is to teach. That is why we are called teachers. We are to teach our learners the knowledge, skills, and attitude appropriate to the subject given to us. But how do we know if we have successfully taught our learners? Dito pumapasok ang importance ng assessment. Through assessment, we can gauge if natuto ang bata or hindi sa mga tinuro natin. Let's quickly go back to the definition of assessment. What is assessment? Assessment is the systematic process of documenting and using empirical data to measure knowledge, skills, attitudes, and beliefs. By taking the assessment, teachers try to improve the student's path towards learning. When we say empirical, it means observe seen, factual, actual, real, verifiable. Sa madaling salita, dapat yung data natin ay valid at hindi gawa-gawa lang. 
Let's refresh our memory of the three types of assessment. So we have the assessment for learning, also known as the formative assessments. Ito yung mga quizzes na usually binibigay natin sa ating mga students after we discuss a topic. So formative assessment um, tells us where the students are in their learning, where they need to go, and how to best get there. We also have the assessment of learning or the summative assessments. Um, perfect example are the quarterly or periodical exam. Ito ay binibigay natin at a given point in time and this is the basis for making judgments about the quality of student learning. So from this, we can say if the students uh, will pass or fail. We also have the assessment as learning. Formative assessment din siya in a way, but um, this is what the students use for metacognition or as basis for their um, monitoring of their own learning. If you want to further differentiate these three types of assessment, you can screenshot this chart, but I'm not gonna explain uh, in detail. We're just reviewing or refreshing our memory of these three types of assessments. Okay, now let's move on to the second subtopic, monitoring and evaluating learner progress and achievement properly. So again, Q&A tayo. I will be needing the assistance of our MCs to choose uh, another two random teachers to answer our questions. All right, for the first question, how do you know if your learner acquired the knowledge, skills, and attitude after the instruction or the lesson discussion? And when do you check student assessment? Again, you can pause this video to give time for the responses from our um, volunteer teachers. Okay, so let's um, take the idea exemplar as a model. In a usual classroom scenario, we present the lesson first. Then we discuss the concepts. Then we provide activities for mastery development. After the students practice the knowledge or skills, we give assessment in a form of written or performance tasks to inform us if our teaching strategy has helped the learner master the knowledge or skills. Okay, let's have another set of questions and another set of volunteer teachers to answer. After you have given the assessment, how do you monitor your learner's progress? And how do you evaluate your learner's achievement? Thank you, teachers, for your answers, and thank you to our MCs for facilitating the Q&A. Now, um, how do we monitor learner progress? If you were going to check your IPCRF for the previous years, beginning school year 2018-2019, you will see this RPMS objective or PPSC strand and it lists the following MOVs. Sige, isa-isahin natin siya ha. Ano ang kinalaman or ano ang contribution ng MOVs na ito sa uh, student progress monitoring? Compilation of a learner's written work with summary of results and with signature of parents. So in my case, I still have the traditional 30 class record wherein I record 
all the scores of my students sa written work and performance tasks nila. So I can easily monitor not just their compliance, but their progress. And if they want to see it for themselves, I also give them or show them my copy. I also have um, output checklist, the one on the left. Um, this is per quarter, so lahat ng output required for the quarter naka enlist, and then I tick the box if they have submitted it. And then I also have the remarks column, and usually on the fourth column, there is the parent's signature wherein I require my students to show their output to their parents and have it signed. So I know na namomonitor din ng parents nila yung progress nila and yung scores nila. I also would like to um, use test this progress chart as an example. And this is something that we can personally practice or sa classroom natin. So sa progress chart, nandiyan naka-enlist lahat ng competencies. And isusulat mo yung student name. Every time the student um, completes a specific competency, tinitik yung box. So this is actually printed big and posted on the wall for students to see and monitor their progress for themselves. Alright, we can also monitor our um, learners' progress with the use of summative assessment tools with TOS and frequency of errors with identified least mastered skills. So every time we have our uh, periodical or quarterly exam, we are asked to submit our um, test paper with TOS or Table of Specification. Okay, now question. Which comes first? TOS or Test Questionnaire? And follow-up question. Which one do you do first? TOS or test questionnaire. So again, I'll be asking our MCs to look for two more teachers to answer these questions voluntarily. Alright, a gentle reminder po ah. Um, POS po muna ang unang dapat ginagawa bago ang test questionnaire. Para saan ba kasi yung TOS na yan? Bakit ba kailangang ipasa yan? Dagdag trabaho pa yan. TOS describes the topics to be covered in a test and the number of items or points which will be associated with each topic. It helps teachers align objectives, instruction, and assessment. It helps ensure the validity of teachers' evaluations based on a given assessment. Validity is the degree to which the evaluations or judgments we make as teachers about our students can be trusted based on the quality of evidence we gather. So, nakakatulong ang TOS to ensure na um, ang i-assess lang natin ay yung dapat nating i-assess at maiwasan natin yung magdagdag ng mga tanong na hindi naman directly related sa competencies na ina-assess natin. Nakakatulong din ng TOS para hindi lang tayo sa low order thinking skills naka-focus but it ensures na pati yung higher order thinking skills ay target din natin. Alright, another one is the lesson plan or modified DLLs showing the index of mastery. An index of mastery is a percentage that indicates how many students have mastered a concept or topic. For example, if 60% of students are at or above mastery, the percentage mastery is 60%. So, sa DLL natin, if you are aware, dun sa latter part, meron dong reflection. Doon da natin dapat sinusulat or nire-record yung index of mastery. So, when we give quizzes after the discussion, um, we accomplish the index of mastery. The index of mastery tells us if 
we should reteach the topic or move on to the next lesson. So these are the tools or strategies that we can use to monitor our students' progress. Remember, if we religiously monitor our learners' progress, we can lessen the number of failing students. The problem is, and most, if not all, are guilty of this. We only check our learners' output few weeks prior to the submission of quarterly grades. If we check our learners' output in a timely manner, we can give our learners immediate feedback, we can track their progress, and we can give appropriate intervention. Webster defines intervention as an act of interfering with the outcome or course, especially of a condition or process. So to prevent students from failing, we give intervention as we track their progress. As we compile our learners' output and keep track of their progress, we now have a data-informed and evidence-based evaluation. What is evaluation? Evaluation focuses on making judgments and decisions based on data gathered from assessments. This makes your evaluation valid. Kaya nga kapag nagbagsak tayo ng bata at lumapit sila sa atin, tinatanong nila tayo bakit sila bumagsak, we can show them evidences because we based our judgment or our evaluation based based on um, data-informed decisions. Let us now proceed to our third subtopic, providing feedback to learners and key stakeholders of learner needs, progress, and achievement to improve learning. Okay, again, let's answer these questions. May I ask our MCs to look for another set of teachers who will answer the following. The first question, when and how do you provide feedback to learners? The second question is, when and how do you provide feedback to key stakeholders? Our IPCRF provides a list of MOVs we can present under this PPSD strand and these are the following. We have the home visitation forms, the parent-teacher log or proof of other stakeholders meeting. This is during PTC, monitoring form during distribution of learning materials, and any form of communication to parents or stakeholders. Maybe uh, we send them letters or we send them private message or kahit mismo dun sa mga group chats. Now, the very important question is, why do we need to provide feedback? Sa part ng learners, through feedback, learners can see their learning more meaningfully. Through immediate feedback, results are more efficient because the mistakes and false beliefs of the learners can be corrected more quickly right at the moment when they are presented with the challenge. Sa part naman ng ating mga parents, through feedback, parents can better understand their child's learning process when they receive information about how their child is studying and performing. This can help parents support their child's learning and help their child avoid repeating mistakes. So we must involve um, the parents of our students in their learning. Remember, effective feedback is timely, ongoing, and specific to the learner. It should also be positive and actionable. We are down to the last subtopic, which is analyzing assessment data as basis for teaching and learning practices and programs. Again, I'll be needing um, two volunteer teachers to answer these questions. The first question is, 
how do you analyze student scores in formative and summative assessments? And the follow-up question is, how do you make use of student assessment data? Assessment data can be derived from the following, index of mastery, ECWARD, and the list of identified least or most mastered skills based on the frequency of errors or correct responses. So in the previous slides, I have discussed the index of mastery already. Again, this is derived from the scores of the students during the quiz. So the index of mastery tells us if magre-reteach tayo ng concept or magpo-proceed na tayo sa pagtuturo ng next lesson. Okay, every um, quarterly exam, lagi tayong kinukulit ni Ma'am Darl na i-accomplish yung ating e-quart. Sometimes, hindi natin siniseryoso yung pag-accomplish ng e-quart because we don't fully understand the essence of e-quart. But actually, um, the data from the e-quart tells us something. I think the best person to explain this are our math teachers because they know better, but um, to just give a quick overview, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng mean, mean percentage score and standard deviation? So, yung mean, yung average ng all ng scores ng mga bata, the MPS indicates the ratio between the number of correctly answered items in a test and the total number of items. And the standard deviation is a measure of how dispersed the data is in relation to the mean. The higher the standard deviation, the lower the precision. The lower the standard deviation, the higher the precision. Ano ba kasing ginagawa ni Ma'am Darl sa data na yan? Ano bang ginagawa ng division office sa data na yan? Remember, this data is not just for compilation, but it is used for decision-making in lesson delivery enhancements, learning resource utilization, and school improvement plan and adjustment. Yung frequency of errors natin, yung pagpapabilang natin, kung ilan ang nakatama sa number one, yung paggamit natin ng zip grade, it tells us the least mastered competencies and the most mastered competencies. Now, what do we do with the least mastered competencies? This tells us that we must modify our teaching and learning practices. Ibig sabihin, hindi nag-work yung original strategy, hindi natutuwa ang bata, kaya least mastered siya. Therefore, the teaching uh, practice must be modified to make it more effective for our students. So we are now on my last slide. And to sum up, let's recap what we have discussed in today's session by forming a framework for assessment and reporting. So after we taught um, concepts to our students, we will use variety of assessment methods to assess their learning. And from there, we will monitor their progress using various monitoring tools. And from the assessment data, we will evaluate our students. From there, we will provide them with the immediate feedback and we will modify the teaching practice if need be. I hope this session will help you enhance your practice on assessment and reporting as you assess, reflect, and report on your students' progress and achievement. For this session's output, you will be given a copy of the teacher reflection form where you will be answering questions based on what you have learned from this session. And that's all. Thank you.